Welcome to this tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the concept of a measure. So you're going to see that a measure is actually a calculation that you're going to use within the context of a pivot table or a pivot chart. So in the previous tutorials, we looked at how we could add new calculated columns into your table. And you saw within the table, we got a new field and we got a new result for each row that is actually in that table. However, you're going to see a measure is a little bit different. It's going to be a calculation we're going to create. And as I say, it's not going to be added into a table and you're not going to see any result within the table. However, when you're using your pivot table or using your pivot chart, you can use that calculation within the context of that visualization. Okay, so we're going to have a look and see how we do that within this tutorial. Please also remember to subscribe and like the channel. Let's jump into the tutorial. I will see you there. Welcome to this tutorial. Hope you've been following the set of tutorials that we've done previously. So, so far what we've done is we've brought some data into our Power Pivot. We've added now quite a number of custom new fields, some calculation fields and some date fields that have been added to our table. However, what we're going to be doing in this tutorial is we're going to be looking at how we can create a new calculation without bringing it into the table. And we call this a measure. So basically that's what we're going to be doing in this tutorial. So let's have a look at this. Uh, again, as I say, if you've been following the tutorials, we're going to go back into our Excel. And you'll know that we've been working with our pivot table. Previous tutorial, we looked at some dates and we looked at how we could get our weekday names to be in the correct chronological order. Let's take this out there. Let's go back to having a look at our subregions. So you'll remember that our subregions are our different countries. So I'll drop that into our pivot table. You'll see that we get our different sum of sales for each of our countries. So we've seen that so far that we've got the different sum of sales. What if you wanted to now know how many customers do I have within each of my actual different countries? Now, in normal Excel, you don't get the ability to be able to do this. It's actually called the distinct count or a unique count. It's got different names depending on which software you're working with. But unfortunately, Excel does not have the function to be able to do this, which is a bit strange. However, we do have the ability to be able to do a distinct count in Power Pivot. So if we took our customer and we actually dropped it into our values, just like we have done with our other fields, you'll see by default we get our count of customer, which is pretty much what would happen with your normal Excel pivot tables. Because you'll remember that our rows was a total of 60,919 when we brought our data into the system. However, we don't want to know the count of the rows, we want to know the count of the customers. Now, if you've used your pivot tables before, you'll know on your right click, you get the ability to use an option called summarize values by. And you'll see that we get our sum, we get count, average, max, min. All of these have been grayed out because remember customer is actually a text field. But at the bottom now, we get the ability to be able to do a distinct count. And you can see that it says count of unique items. Now when I select this, it actually gives me the correct answer. I do have 633 customers and it's now telling me how many customers are in each of my countries. So that's great. So we've now been able to get the number of customers for each country. But let's look at the next challenge that we might be facing here. Let's say now though, we're working on this pivot table and we now wanted to know, we wanted to know what was the average sale for each of our customers. So we basically want to take this value divided by this value and produce a result within the table itself. So let's have a look and see how we would do that. What you'll see at the top is we've got something called measures. So we'll click on that. I'm going to say we're going to create a new measure. So we select that. You'll see that we've got our table name. We've only got one table, so that's data. And then we've got a measure name. So I'm going to call this my average sale per customer. And actually, let's shorten that a bit. Let's make it per cust. Then you can see you can put a description in here if you wanted to. But I'm not too worried about that at the moment. We'll, we'll leave that. So what you've got is you've got a different set of formulas if you wanted to insert specific functions. But in this case, basically, I want to say that I want to take the sum of my sales and I want to divide it by the distinct count of my customer. So we can actually do that. We could just say, let's take the sum. You can see as I start typing, that's my function. And I select it. And it's going to say sum of what? It's giving me a list of all the field names. We're going to say the sum of our sales here. So it's our data table, our sales field. Remember to close your parentheses. We could actually then say we want to divide that. And we want to divide it now by the distinct count. So you can see as I start typing DIST, and we've now got a distinct count function. So we're going to say we want to divide it by the distinct count. 
And in this case, we're going to say it's our customer. So I'm going to select that. Again, remember to close your parentheses. Okay, so we've got the sum of the sales divided by the distinct count. Let's check the formula. No errors in the formula. What's also nice about this is it gives me the ability to be able to format. So I'm going to say it's going to be a number and it's going to have no decimals and we're going to use our thousand separator so we can read it. Okay, so we got that. We're going to click OK on that. What you'll see now is it's now created a new field called average sale per customer. And it's now done the calculation where we've taken that value, divided by that value, and got to our totals. So that works really, really well, as you can see. If we go back into our data model, just want to point out as well, you'll see that we actually have no new fields in our table. So after weekday name, there's actually no new fields there. However, what you will see in this bottom area is there's now our average sale per customer. So this has been added down in what is called this calculation area. So if you wanted to turn this off, you could go to the top here, could turn that off. But for now, I actually find it quite useful. So we've actually now got average sale per customer there. And let's say you wanted to see that only for a specific business segment. So you see the value at the moment. So basically it's taking the total sales in your data set divided by the total number of customers at the moment. But if you actually use a filter here and you said I only want to see for bikes, you'll see now that their value changes because now it's got the total sales and the number of customers just for bikes. So it actually uses that filter. Okay, you also have an option on the top to clear the filters. So I'm actually going to use that. So we'll clear all the filters, we'll go back there. Okay, so I just wanted to point out that these options are actually created there. Okay, so I'm going to switch back to our book again. And what I do want to show you is that this sum of sales at the moment is actually called an implicit measure. So what's actually happening at the moment is that the system is using all of the data that is in the table. And each time you're calculating this, it's using the sales field to calculate the data. Whereas a measure is actually calculated within the pivot table itself. So measures tend to be a lot more efficient at being able to do the calculations than an implicit measure would be. So often when you're working with bigger data models, you might want to then create me measures for this. So we could actually create a measure called sum of sales, and we could create it, say, called total sales. So let's go to our measures. Let's create a new measure here. So let's say we're going to create now a measure name called total sales. And again, this is just going to now be the sum, and it's going to be of my sales. So if we go down, there we go, we've got our sales. I'm going to accept that. Remember to close your parentheses. We can check our formula. Again, now we've got our number. Use thousand separator, no decimals. I'm going to click OK on that. Okay, so now you can see that the total sales has been added. Obviously, it equals the same as the sum of the sales, but this is now a measure. So if you actually go down, you'll see number one, we've got our average sale per customer, and it's got its own little FX there telling you it's a measure. And if we go down, you'll see now that we've got now total sales. So let's say we just cleared this. Clear our whole table. Let's just clear all. So let's say we go back and we want to see by our different categories now. And this time we want to now see our total sales. You'll see the total sales then would be calculated for each of those. Let's say we wanted to know each of the customers and we wanted it as a measure as well. So just remember, just go to Power Pivot, go to your measures, new measure. And let's say we call this number of customers. So again, now we would just use the function and say we want our distinct count. And again, we're going to use our data table, our customers. Close our parentheses on that. Check the formula, no errors. Again, we can do formatting. Click OK. And now we should have a new field called number of customers. And there we go. We can see for each category now the number of customers. So what we're doing by creating these measures, and let's have a look at them. We can manage the measures and see we've got these three is we now get the ability to be able to simplify the way that we're managing our data tables. So basically, you tend to find the measures are much easier to manage. The other thing we've done now is because we've created a total sales and we've got a number of customers, we could actually edit this formula. 
So instead of saying the sum of the sales divided by the distinct count, we actually have measures for that. Also, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a also a DAX function called divide. So I'm going to say we're going to use divide, which again is something you won't find in Excel. So we're going to say divide. You've got your, your total numerator here. So in this case, if I press the left square bracket, you will see the total cells as a measure now appears. So I can say take total cells, comma, take my number of customers. So I can divide my total cells by the number of customers. And you tend to find that these measures can be much easier to work with. Again, let's check the formula. No errors. Click OK. Click Close on that. And you can see it's updated now, the average sale per customer. And let's drag that into our pivot table. And there we go. We'll take that amount, divide by that amount, should give you that amount. Okay, so there we go. There's a tutorial on working with measures. I want to conclude this tutorial here. Hope you've enjoyed it, and I look forward to having you on the next one.